And in humanity's desperation, they burned the sky, as solar energy was the machine's main source of energy, which inevitably led to the creation of the Matrix. Yet the destruction of our sky only benefits an entity that does not need the sun to survive. We would face enormous biological and ecological issues if we were ever deprived of the light and the heat from the sun. Humans would suffer from vitamin D deficiency, necessary to absorb calcium in the intestines, essential for a child's growth, as well as for the strengthening of the immune system. People deprived of sunlight will develop weakness in the bones and will be more prone to diseases. They would become susceptible to upper respiratory infections and be more vulnerable to autoimmune diseases, allergies, cardiovascular problems, etc. And little by little, all biological life would slowly go extinct. For many critics of the Matrix, the burning of the skies never made sense because the machines could choose other methods to obtain energy, such as nuclear, hydro, wind, or even geothermal. Maybe turning humans into batteries wasn't the idea in the first place. Have you ever wondered what gave power to the cities of Zion and Io? The reason Zion is underground is that it uses geothermal energy to run its machinery. The city takes advantage of the heat that comes naturally from the depths of the planet. Like other contradictions in Morpheus's telling of the past, this too doesn't make sense. If humans manage to harness the energy from the Earth's core, why don't the machines do the same? All of this makes even less sense when the Architect reveals to Neo that Zion has been destroyed multiple times before. Just stop and think about this for a second. This means that Zion is a creation of the machines. The technology and process of harnessing geothermal energy to be used by the machine city is built by the machines every time a new matrix cycle begins. This confirms that the machines don't need humans for energy, and maybe they never did. Now the machines don't need the sun or the humans for energy. So is the story about the humans burning the sky a lie? Morpheus learned of this event from the Zion archives. The archives are a part of the city's main computer or data bank. The red pills also use the computer to store mission data and run training programs. The Animatrix gave us a glimpse into this story. Yet there is one important detail that nearly everyone always overlooks. At the start of the program, before it explains the events of the world, it calls itself the Zion Archives. Why is this important? Because the machines build Zion, including its archives. So all the supposed history recorded in those files are most likely fabrications. They're just bedtime stories. The most important clue that the machines were the ones that burned the sky is the material saved in those archives. It's not clearly explained what the clouds are made of, but we know that it functions as an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, which drains the energy of the human ships and the sentinels. With this, we are pretty much sure that it is not made of biological material. The confirmation of what the clouds are actually made of is in the Matrix Revolution script, specifically in the scene when Neo and Trinity pass through the black clouds. The Lagos plunges into the sky with a surreal splash, like a plane crashing into a sea of shaving cream. The molecular replicators immediately drain the life from the sentinels, and they fall dead, tearing through the clouds that cling to them momentarily, like shredded pieces of parachute, before letting them fall away. The Lagos is engulfed by a ball of lightning as it is attacked by the sky. It shakes violently, every light blowing out, until the ship dies. The theme of molecular replicators in science fiction is frequently associated with advanced construction, nanotechnology, and the control of matter at microscopic scales. The creation and usage of this type of tech don't coincide with humanity's actions and beliefs before the machine war. They banned artificial intelligence and are doing everything possible to destroy it. The technology used to describe the clouds is a type of nanotechnology. If humans wanted to destroy the machines, attacking them with the nanotechnology that artificial intelligence could then hack or take control of is risky and kinda dumb. So let's say it was the machines that covered the skies with black clouds made of nanobots. The plan does sound like it would work better on organic life forms than on machines, doesn't it? But did you know that the black clouds also served as a protective shield? In one of the Matrix comics, where the end of the world is explained, an alien invasion happens, a large-scale attack by ships from another planet, and the machines send a human to fight them. The true purpose of this layer of nanotechnology that blankets the Earth is to serve as a shield to disable every ship that enters the planet. An anti-alien shield, if you will. That's what we believe anyway after reading this comic.